Hi everyone, it's Michelle here again. A uh, little bit annoyed and uh, because this is the second time I'm having to do this video. My phone ran out of memory and I have to do it all over again late at night because this little machine is going to its new owner. Anyway, let's forget about that and let me tell you about the machine. This machine is a new home model 950. You can see that written on the plate over here. And it is made by Janome or Janome as some people say. Don't know which is correct. Either way, that's what the machine is. Don't know what age it is because I've been trying to look it up and it appears that most of the stuff online I can find about new home is that they are maybe the 50s but this machine does not look like it's from the 50s i would say this machine is late 60s possibly even the 70 early 70s however i could be wrong but that's just um, what i believe this machine is going off to a lady in my uh, community sewing group that needs a sewing machine and you'll never believe where this machine comes from. I mean, seriously, I, it looks beautiful now. Don't get me wrong. It did not look like this yesterday. She was absolutely filthy. There's still some marks on her here where the tape was stuck on and the case is broken. The case was dirty. The cover was filthy. She just looked a total wreck. And there's a very good reason for that. She came out of a skip. And I don't mean the skip on the street that some people have. I actually mean she came from the rubbish dump. Um, Wigan Council, which is the council um, in the area we live in, has a recycling centre, as they call it now, but it used to be called just the dump. And this machine was dumped, one of hundreds, I believe. And I was given this machine by the council, and via a friend of mine, Mickey, and I have rescued her, cleaned her up thoroughly, uh, given her a new lease of life, and she's sewing beautifully. That's the incredible story of this machine. Her name is Nell, by the way, N-E-L-L, -L, and I'm hoping to take her to the sewing group tomorrow. So the video today is to show you how to thread the machine. I haven't found a manual for her, uh, unless you want to buy a manual, which I most of the time refuse to do because if I have a manual, I am more than happy to copy it and I put it on my blog and I put it online free for anybody to use and to take. And I really object to people taking a photocopy of a manual and then charging people for it. So this is the start of a little instruction on how to thread this machine so that whoever is receiving this as a gift will know how to get started. So here we go. I'm going to get to the bobbin in a bit, but for the start, we're gonna pretend this is a spool of thread. Well, it technically is, except it's on a bobbin. But I um, often do this when I have large cones of thread, uh, this is a cone, of, these are cones over here. So they're too big for these machines. Then I'll often wind them onto smaller cones or bobbins or something so they're usable. You start off with this little post. It goes down into the machine and it gets pulled up. Try and keep these little felt discs on here. They stop the machine from actually being worn away, the paintwork and the enamel, if that's what it's got. But it also keeps it running smoothly. So you pop your thread onto the pin. Doesn't matter for this machine which way around it is. It can come wind off clockwise or it can wind off anti-clockwise. You then take your thread and in here there's a little hole and your thread goes down through that little hole. Underneath here, just as a matter of interest, is a little spring mechanism, and that is where your thread goes when you're winding a bobbin. That's not what we're doing right now, we're doing threading. 
Okay, we come down here to the tension discs. And the two discs here is where you put your thread. So it goes under the disc, up past the spring, pull it up beyond the spring, and then release it, and it'll hook around here. It's a little bit dark, so you need to get down there a little bit better. So it comes up past the spring here. Okay. Now, next step is to wind your hand wheel so that this lever here is in the up position and this machine you have to thread through the hole there's no slot in this bar so you thread through there and the next one is this tiny little spring here which your thread will go under and then you go down to this one here and you go under that one and finally you go to this spring here so you go towards the back of the machine Sorry, I haven't got that over there. You go to the back of the spring and you pull it towards you and it'll go into the actual hole of the spring. Finally, you thread your needle. At this point, I generally put the presser foot down because that then grips the thread and stops more thread being reeled off. One big thing to notice with this new home machine is the flat part of the needle on this machine is sideways to the machine. In other words, you're going to thread your needle from left to right, not from front to back, which is common on most machines, except very old machines. Now, I might have my hand in the way for this, but you're going to snip your thread at a 45 degree angle. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that microscopically that is a 45 degree angle and it therefore makes it so much easier for you to thread the machine. If you have any trouble, it's usually because there's fluff on the needle and you can just lick your fingers and your thread should pass through very easily. So left to right. Now you can raise your presser foot again and release your thread. Leave that at the front at the moment because you're going to need that when you do your bobbin. So moving on to the bobbin, here we have a bobbin and here we have our bobbin case. Now this post goes into a slot inside here and this little tab gets pulled out and that will hold well, it holds your bobbin in, stops your bobbin from falling out, but it also gives you a nice place for you to grip onto. So while you're doing this, you hold your bobbin like that. If it's front loading, if it's side loading, you're going to be putting it in like that. Okay. Take your bobbin and for this type of machine and the majority of these machines, your thread must come off the left side or in a P shape. If you have a look, we've got a P a Q would be down the other side. So this is a P shape. And then you engage that bobbin into the bobbin holder. There's the little post and it goes into the hole of the bobbin. So you put that in there, not moving your thread um, to the other side. You keep your thread on the left and you engage the two together. Now you can release that and it'll stop your um, you hold your bobbin like this, and you then take your thread, put it into the slot on the side here. I'm going to go down where it's a bit lighter. There's a slot over there, and you pull it towards you or to the right, and it must go with a little click between the discs. That's a spring. This is a spring here. So that will go in there and your bobbin is now ready to go. Your bobbin should be tight enough to just drop gently when you give it a tug and it mustn't be too tight. If it's too tight, you adjust the screw. Be very careful. You don't over tighten it or over loosen it. So once again, pull out the tab. That'll stop your bobbin falling out. Okay. And then get your thread out of the way and you pop that 
onto the post, under the machine there, get the little post in its slot there, leave this open. This machine doesn't have a little bite out here where the thread is loose. So I can't, I don't want to close it completely because it'll actually trap the thread and I won't be able to wind it up. Next thing to do is you want to get your bobbin up to the top. And you do that by holding gently onto your top thread. You use your hand wheel here on the right. This is your hand wheel, okay? And always turn your hand wheel towards you, always. The only time you ever turn your hand wheel away from you is if you've got a real mouse nest underneath your machine. And sometimes it helps to just jiggle it backward and forward, but you must use the machine and the hand wheel towards you. So you're holding this gently, turn the hand wheel slowly, gently down. Now you're gonna to start to gently pull. You'll feel a bit of tension. And if you keep turning the hand wheel, you'll suddenly feel it release. And when it does that, you give it a gentle tug. And you can see now you've got a loop here and that loop is your bobbin thread. Now, if I'd been sensible, I would have used a different color so you could see this a little bit better. But there you go. So your bobbin thread is now at the top together with your top thread. You close up the compartment there and you pop your threads to the back. You should now be ready to sew. Pop your thread of fabric underneath. Turn your needle down into the fabric. Oh, this is very messy. And... Start off gently if you've got an old machine in, and there she goes. Sewing away beautifully. And who would have thought this machine came out of a skip? Hopefully, she will go on to provide many hours of enjoyment and sewing satisfaction to the lady who receives her. And... Thank you for watching and I hope that's been useful and it will help you with your new home 950 to get threaded and insert a bobbin. Thanks everybody. Take care. Bye.